Welcome back to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, everyone. This is Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. In today's video, I'm going to ponder, is Star Citizen ready for me to give my recommendation to my friends, family members, and co-workers to play the game? Now, that's a tough one, because I know that the game is still in development, and I know it's going to be some time before we actually have the finished product. But we do have some game elements ready to go. We have missions, we have emergent gameplay, we have cargo runs, and of course we have piracy. There's a lot going on in the game, things that make it fun, but is it fun enough? Is it fun enough to drag your friends into it? And that's a hard question to answer. Something just happened recently that made it a little bit easier for me to actually bring this topic up. And that is, Star Citizen's latest monthly report revealed persistence. Persistence with the things that we buy. Persistence with the things that we do. Persistence with the relationships we make. Persistence across patches. And that's going to do a lot to bring us forward. Now, one of the missions that you could do today is called a delivery mission. Like most other missions, you pick this up in your Moby Glass. Hit F1 if you don't know what I'm talking about while you're in the game, and that's your Moby Glass. Hit the icon all the way to the right, and that's your journal, and that is where you can pick up your missions. The delivery missions send you on a wild goose chase. It's not really a wild goose chase. You go out, you pick up a box, and you'll deliver it somewhere else. In this situation, we've gone to Selen. At Selen, we had to go to one of these outposts, and inside the outpost, we have to go and find the vending machine. It's not really a vending machine. It's more like a drop-off and pickup box that UPS or FedEx would use. We go up to the box, and we tell the box that we have a pickup, and it's going to materialize the box right in front of us. Well, behind that door, of course. When it opens up, we grab the box, we put it in our cargo hold, and then we run it off to another place. So, let's get this thing placed on our cargo hold. We should have no problem doing this. Hold down the F key, look down at the box, choose place, point it where you want to go, and let go of the F key. And there we are. Physics was a little weird with that box. Now, having made the pickup, we flew from Selen over to Daymar. Now on Daymar, we're looking for a place to make this delivery. And of course, bugs galore in Star Citizen. Somehow this box has moved further back in my cargo hold into an area that should really be blocked off. I'm not really sure why that area even exists in the ship. Kind of looks like it might be another cargo hold that could come down. I'm not sure about this. I probably have to do my research. But after a few minutes of jumping up and down, I was able to dislodge that box. And of course, the last part of this mission is to just go and make the delivery to a similar box here on Daymar. And this time we're going to press the I have a delivery button. That's the arrow up. After placing the box inside of this receptacle, we're going to get a mission complete message at the top of our screen and if we wait around long enough it's going to tell us we made about 7200 credits. Now I've done five, six, seven, ten of these in a row and made quite a substantial amount of money for me. And I've done that without the game crashing and I feel that this is a mission that's really fun for an early adopter to do. So now we're over on Hurston, Lorville specifically. We're in the clothing store nearby, and we're picking up a couple of elements for the next kind of mission, one that just came into the game recently. We're picking up a mining tool, well, a multi-tool with a mining barrel, and we're picking up a rucksack and some quick flares. As soon as we get this done, we're going to get into the first part that really freaks me out, and that's 
How far we have to run in this city to get around. And this is also part of the gameplay. It's how big the actual game area is. That we need trains to take us from where we spawn in to where we are able to find our ships. But that does give us time to pick up the next mission. This mission is going to be an investigation mission that takes us to a cave system. This is a brand new mission type. Now investigation missions have been around for a while. The first type of investigation mission that we received in Star Citizen was investigating what happened at Kovalex Shipping Hub. The mission we're on today involves searching for a missing person in a cave system over on Aberdeen. I'm a veteran to space sims, and Star Citizen is no different from any of the others. Travel times could be quite daunting. And in this situation, we had to fly from Hurston over to Aberdeen, which is not that long of a flight. Some of the missions that I discussed before, like the delivery missions, can take you from one planetary system to another. And if you don't have the right ship or the right equipment on that ship, some of those travel times can be quite long. 15, 20, 25 minutes if you're in a really slow ship. Cloud Imperium Games is still doing their best to figure out what the right time for travel is. Currently, I feel that it's much better than games like Elite Dangerous, but maybe still a little bit long for the people that are not veteran flight simmers. In today's world of the FPS and the Battle Royale modes of multiplayer games, I think that Star Citizen and games like it might come off as being just a little boring. But if you've been around Space Sims for as long as I have, travel is one of the things that you look forward to. It's a time when you get to bond with your ship, when you get to feel what it really is like to be a starship captain. And I really like it. Really like it. On a side note, I took out one of the vanguards today, mainly because it's brand new in the game again. I think the vanguard has gone through three reworks already, and each time they just keep getting better and better. Now having gotten to the moon of Aberdeen, we now have to exit the spacecraft walk outside of the ship, make sure the ship is secure so nobody can steal it from us, and then enter the cave system. So it can be quite a long time from start of your day inside of Star Citizen till the start of your time of actually commencing your mission. The cave systems are procedurally generated and then painted out with all different effects and equipment inside. This is Star Citizen's first pass on cave systems and something that I do want people to take with a little bit more leniency. Things in Star Citizen tend to come out with a lot of bugs and then get fixed over time and then polished and then turned into something that's truly a work of art. Cave systems are not there yet. In my 48 hours in the cave systems, I've found myself stuck in crevices that I couldn't get out of, stuck in a T-pose, in other words, constantly falling for no reason, and just utterly lost because I was stupid and didn't bring enough of my quick flares with me. I do see where Star Citizen is going with this. Cloud Imperium Games has made something that's going to be pretty miraculous here. Pretty fun. They keep on bringing new and more enticing pieces to the game. Now in the future, you may find NPCs here. You may find a lot of equipment here. You may find Van Duel here. You never know. But that's exactly what I like about the game. The fact that you don't know. And I can't wait for those days to come. But I have to say, for all the things that I'm talking about, is Star Citizen ready to play? Cave systems, I'd have to say somebody that's coming into the game for the first time, go there, check them out, but don't put them into your repertoire of missions until you start seeing all the bugs fixed. It can be very frustrating getting through 45 minutes of a cave investigation 
and then just get stuck inside of a wall or stuck in a crevice and not be able to get out. One of the biggest reasons to come to Star Citizen is for the wonderful spacecraft that Cloud Empyrean Games has created for us. Today I'm taking out two. I'm going to take out one of the latest flyable ships, the Vanguard Harbinger, and start my conversation with you. And then I'm going to end it by flying last year's sleeper, the Anvil Arrow. Now the Vanguard here inside a pirate swarm is one of the most impressive ships as long as you go in here multiplayer. I did say that multiplayer you can play with friends. Friends are the best way to enjoy your time in Star Citizen and we will talk about that in the last part of this wonderful video. So the Vanguard Harbinger here in Pirate Swarm is able to make quick work of most of the light fighters. One of the reasons I brought the Harbinger into this fight was because eventually we're going to be fighting some larger ships like Constellations, some Cutlasses, and some other vanguards. Having the huge armament in the nose that this ship has is going to give us a little bit more leverage when trying to survive the gauntlet here. We've now switched modes and jumped into Vandal Swarm. In Vandal Swarm, you're facing off against some of the best pilots in the Vandal clans. Vandal Swarm is where all new pilots should start to hone their skills. You'll face off against blades, scythes, and glaives in nine waves and face off against some of the most amazing aces in the Vandal clans. A few episodes ago I talked about ships that would be wonderful to start off in in Star Citizen. This is the Arrow. It is one of the best ones to take into Vandal Swarm early on. Mainly because you're going to start the game with little funds and little ability to upgrade your ship. And this one starts with four Gatling guns that just rip the enemy apart. You're also not going to be facing off against any real heavy competition here in Vandal Swarm. Star Citizen saves that for real life when you have PvP battles. When it comes to PvP, those are going to be much more difficult because people are much less predictable and much higher quality pilots than AI. But this is where you start to hone your skills and this is a rip-roaring fun time to have either solo or even better fun to have when you play with your friends. I love Vandal Swarm and many a night before I go to bed I'll jump into my arrow or make it really difficult and jump into something like a Mustang or an Aurora and try to get through the gauntlet. Vandal Swarm has been the end all be all of fun for me and Star Citizen since it was introduced. But it's not enough for me to tell people to come and play the game at this point because once you've run the gauntlet a couple of times unless you're an addicted gamer like myself you may not like to come back here all that often but if you do like that type of gameplay i think this is some of the most fun that star citizen has to offer today and you could even do it with friends Multiplayer Vandal Swarm is absolutely incredibly fun. Like many other people that are addicted to Star this. Citizen, I like to stream. There. I stream oh. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights on twitch.tv forward slash Star Citizen AA. Not too long ago, I was streaming, and one of my friends who normally moderates oh, for me was going to bring over his up. Banu Defender so I could take a look at it. I was on Hurston, he was on Port Alasar. I was going to meet him in the middle. He had made his way all the way back to Hurston, and we were going to meet down at Lorville, and I was going to jump on his ship and go for a ride. Well, I have one of the Gen 2s, not the Gen 3s, still bad quality X56s. And every now and then, I'll have random button presses from it because it's not a very good joystick and throttle. The newer HOTUS from Logitech are being made to a much higher quality than the one that I have. I wound up ejecting, and I wasn't quite in space yet. 
so I immediately started falling to the ground. One of the things that Chris Roberts talks about the most is the emergent gameplay that is going to be inside of Star Citizen. Emergent gameplay is gameplay they don't have to create. It's gameplay created by us. So for those of us that are here playing Star Citizen, whether it be streaming or playing with our friends and just being connected on Discord or whatever talk service you use, there's a lot of fun that can be had. Large organizations have races on Daymar. Some organizations have the capture the flag exercises. There's always something going on when the game goes live. And I think that's one of the best things that's ever happened. My org was very active early on in the development of Star Citizen, but has since become less and less active over time. However, Joe and myself have continued to meet up inside of Discord weekly. And in this situation, Joe came to my rescue and tried to save me. But due to the lag that we were experiencing on the test server, and due to the fact that there are no aerodynamics that are at play when you're falling through the atmosphere inside of Star Citizen, he was unable to save me. So I fell 100,000 meters to my death. Minutes after my death, I met up with Notable Joe in a hangar over in Lorville. And in that hangar, I got to see for the very first time the Banu Defender. It was well worth falling to my death. So we're not going to spend any time here talking about this beautiful new ship. Instead, we're going to try to close out my feelings about the game. Is it ready? And, you know, it's taken me a long time to get to this point. I think there is enough to do in the game. I didn't even talk about FPS. I didn't talk about racing. I didn't talk about the wonderful things that you can do as a group with races on planets, races through the asteroids. I didn't talk about mining. I didn't talk about so much. I tried to show things that were fun and I tried to show some things that will be fun in the future, but may be broken now. I think the one element that swung me the most, the one thing that helped me make the decision that I'm coming to on whether Star Citizen is ready to be played by my friends and family, is the fact that persistence is going to be in the game. Now, there has been a level of persistence in the game for some time. But losing all your credits and the ships and the equipment and the clothes, the items that you collect, every time there's a patch, has kept me out of the game for a very long time. And persistence, or a lack of it, has been the single biggest reason why I haven't suggested to my friends to play the game. But today, I think Star Citizen's ready. I don't think it's ready for the masses. I think it's ready for those people that can build a community in the game, that could get a group of friends and take part in that emergent gameplay, that could find their way amongst the planetary systems that are in the game at this point. FPS, mining, running missions, and just having a great time with friends, that could all be done in the game right now. And the fact that any money that you make any ships that you purchase, any equipment that you are able to put on your ships are going to persist in the near future between patches. I think that in and of itself has led me to make a decision that, yes, I'm going to tell many of my friends to come in and join me in the future. You know, it's been a long time for me to get to this point. I've been playing the game regularly since the first hangar module came out. But I don't know if you can call that playing, as all I did was walk out and gush over how beautiful my ships were. I think it was the first working version of Arena Commander that made it fun. And when Star Marine got in the game, wow, Star Citizen really became a wonderful place to be with your friends. It's been a while, folks. And yes, I think it's getting to be that time where you can bring some of those friends in to have fun in Star Citizen. 
I wonder what you think. I know that there's going to be a lot of controversy here. I know some people are going to tell me the game will never be finished. And I understand, and I can see why you feel that way. But for me, what I feel is that this is enough for now. I will be greatly disappointed if it doesn't turn into something much bigger over the next 12 months as we get salvage and we get exploration and we get much, much more into the game. Next year, the Crusader landing zones will be added and the Stanton system will finally be finished, or at least I hope it will. And it will let CAG move on to creating us new star systems to visit. At that point, I hope the naysayers start to raise an eyebrow and start to see that this game is really going to become something special. If you liked the episode, please click the thumbs up button below. It will really help the channel grow. And if you do subscribe, clicking that notification icon will notify you of all my future videos. And that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching and listening to me for the last six years. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.